The foods we eat and the potentially risky effects they can have on our bodies. We're all well accustomed to hearing about sugar and fat and calories and obesity, but, but what about salt? A recent study found that most Americans consume two to three times the healthy level of sodium, a daily intake that can have devastating long-term consequences. So why so much salt? And what can we do about it? Jeremy Hubbard has our report. Right in front of our eyes, Frank Sachs, this mild-mannered Harvard professor, just killed 10,000 people. So now we're going to go up. So that's uh, 20,000 deaths. And that's 50, 100,000 deaths. His casualty count rises with every flick of that measuring spoon. 150,000 deaths to get it up to 11 grams per day. Salt is the deadly weapon here. This heaping mound, 11 grams, is what most American men swallow every day. And it is killing 150,000 of us each year. Salt has a, has a terrible effect on our heart health. I mean, it damages the arteries, makes them stiffer. It raises our blood pressure, causes heart attacks and strokes. It's no surprise that two out of every three American salt users shake the best. Morton salt. Sachs is waging a new attack in an old battle that dates back to black and white TV and grandma's recipes, the assault on salt. Sodium is a cheap way to flavor up food and, and cause us a lot of harm along the way. We have a love-hate relationship with it. Salt punchlines pepper movies like Dumb and Dumber. Quick, toss some salt over your right shoulder. What the hell? Uh-uh. These guys, the Yin Yang twins, even rapped about it. But when it comes to diet, it's much more serious. The FDA and doctors have declared a renewed war on salt. So if we reduce this by 50%, we'd pretty much wipe out most heart attacks and strokes. Easier said than done. As you know, salt lurks everywhere, not just in those soups and cold cuts, but where you'd least expect it, from breakfast foods to bread. Bread is, contains the highest amount of sodium in processed foods. Just take a look at the Wonder Bread. Mm -hmm. There are 220 milligrams of sodium per slice, which means that if you make a sandwich, it's 440. Government doctors now suggest most of us consume 1,500 milligrams of sodium every day. We consume more than twice that much. If you follow the new rules, this TV dinner is more than a day's worth. That box of Lunchables, a favorite with kids, has almost half the daily sodium recommended for an adult. And then there's eating out. Last year, the Center for Science and the Public Interest lambasted Red Lobster for its Admiral's Feast with nearly three days' worth of sodium. Olive Garden's Tour of Italy has well over two days' worth. The parent company for both restaurant chains says it is looking at salt reduction as part of a broader effort to provide healthier fare. Do you think we'll get to a point where there's legislation, there are laws that mandate that restaurants and food companies actually reduce the amount of sodium they're putting in food? I think you know, we need to have inducements to get the food industry overall to reduce the salt. One group, one company might be hesitant to do that because a competitor is not. So I think we need to level the playing field and, uh, and really push them to do so. A few don't need any more pushing. Kraft has already trimmed sodium levels in those Lunchables by 10% and has vowed to cut an average of another 10% from all of its North American products over the next two years. Heinz, 15% from its ketchup. General Mills, Sara Lee, Campbell's and others have made similar promises. As for Professor Sachs, he has gone grassroots with his salt fight. We hosted a visiting professor of nutrition and I took him out to dinner here. And I uh, said, this salt is really high in the food, huge. Food is great, but so much salt. He persuaded the chef at this, his favorite restaurant, to just give it a try. Reduce salt by 25% and see what happens. So I guess it worked. He's using less salt. He sure is. All right, well, let's go see if he still is. Why don't we put him to the test? All right. <laughs> Inside, Chef Gordon Hammersley prepares salmon two ways, the way he used to make it and the way he makes it now. In the old days, I would have just heavily salted the fish. Um, and I would have flipped it over and done it on both sides. These days, I'm taking a much more careful look at how much salt I'm doing. And I'm just doing a light sprinkle on both sides. Some researchers say cutting salt by 25%, you won't even be able to taste a difference. So remember, this is the salty one, this is the not so salty one. Just gonna finish with a little bit of olive oil. Here we go, 
salmon with summer vegetables. And it goes right onto the plate. Time to put our palates to the test. Mmm. That's definitely the saltier of the two. That's right. As Frank pointed out, we could still taste the salt over here. Yeah, and, and you know, in my opinion, being a cook, I think that salt obviously adds to the flavor of things. Right. And I wouldn't want to probably do it without salt. Mm -hmm. um, but um, clearly, what I used to do and what I'm doing now, there's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, the point's a good one. This still has a ton of flavor. Right. Gordon says there have been no complaints. No That's one sent the food one. back. But still, this is a radical change for chefs. You know, the old adage that, you know, the difference between a good cook and a great cook is a pound of butter and a box of salt. You know, we were brought up that way. That's how we kind of <laughs> yeah. think. It is not just Gordon. Lots of chefs use salt. We're going to season with a little bit of salt and pepper. A little pinch of salt. A little kosher salt. We'll season it liberally with salt and pepper. And it all adds up. For Tom Colicchio on Top Chef, sometimes it's just too much salt. Kevin, the broth was very salty. I just couldn't get past the salt. So how do you convince the guys in the kitchen that this is the way to go? Uh, it's a macho thing. We just have to beat on them. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't, Frank Sachs will. For this sodium-obsessed professor, this is one small victory in the new Assault on Salt. I'm Jeremy Hubbard for Nightline in Boston.